Hello everyone and welcome to another video and what is another episode of reviewing your gaming rigs. This is the mini series where we take a look at some of the user submitted rigs that you guys have sent me on Instagram and Twitter. We go through them, take a look at the specs, take a look at how they look, talk about what's inside, what upgrade path you might want to take in the future and just generally talk about your gaming PCs for a good 10-15 minutes. So let's get into it and get to our first submission. So our first PC comes from Bad Magic 137 here, an i7-2600 with 16 gigs of DDR3 clocked at 1600 megahertz in dual channel, paired with a Vega 64, a 240 gig SSD and a one terabyte hard drive. Now, I actually really like this combination, but they have said here that the i7-2600, or they're assuming that 2600 is bottlenecking the Vega 64, and they're wondering whether or not an i7-3770 would prove to be a good upgrade. Now, they've also mentioned the cable management here, but to be honest, it doesn't look that bad. I'm not sure what that is in the bubble wrap there, but we won't go into that. The 2600 is still a good CPU. The 2600K would be a little better for gaming because it can be easily overclocked. And if you did want to upgrade the i7 to a 3770, you probably won't see much difference at stock speeds. But if you went from a 2600 to a 3770K and gave it a nice overclock, providing the motherboard allows it, then you know it would be much better paired with that Vega 64, although there wouldn't be too much of a bottleneck, I don't think. An overclocked i7-3770K, well, you'd be surprised at what it can still do in 2020. All right, so next up we have a system from Sid underscore Spammy, again on Instagram here. I built it three years ago, they've said, cheat out on the case and PSU, thereby receiving poor airflow and no space for cable management. The PSU isn't modular, so that makes the cable management situation even worse. Honestly, the cable management doesn't look too bad. I would recommend giving that PC a bit of a clean, though, because dust can be a computer's worst nightmare. In terms of the specs, well, we have an i5-6600K paired with 16 gigs of DDR4 and an RTX 2060 Super that's been upgraded from a 1060 very recently. That is a very nice upgrade indeed. You Not only do you get the benefits of newer technology there, but you've also got ray tracing should you want it. In fact, you've said there that you chose the 2060 Super because of DLSS 2.0 and the fact that you needed stable ray tracing FPS in Minecraft for short films. There you go. The processor heavily bottlenecks the GPU um, because it's not overclocked and four cores, four threads here, you've said, is really showing its age. But you know what? The 6600K is still an okay CPU. I agree that uh, an overclock would probably benefit it there, but if you wanted to, you could even upgrade to a 7700K i7 in the near future. Um, the Gigabyte GAH110M S2 motherboard can be updated BIOS-wise, and then it will support a 7700K, um, or just replace it with a 6700K i7, which you can probably find for a little bit cheaper. That is, if you wanted to consider upgrading in the near future. You'd see some difference going from that i5 to an i7, even without the ability to overclock. So it would be a nice difference, but it all depends on whether or not you want to pay to upgrade. Now, what I did notice here, a quick note here, the hardware accelerated GPU feature fixed some of the stuttering you were having due to the bottleneck with Red Dead Redemption 2 offering 10 more FPS on average. I'll definitely have to check that out um, because a 10 FPS difference with the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling enabled, well, that is certainly a difference worth talking about. So I'll have to check that out in a video too. Thank you for letting me know about that, a nice PC. Just give it a bit of a clean. Now we've got a very clean looking system from III Dixie III. I hope those are I's and not L's, but again, I have to apologize every time if I pronounce any of your usernames incorrectly. Here we go, a Ryzen 5 2600 PC with an A320M Pro motherboard, 16 gigs of DDR4, and an RX 590. At least there was an RX 590 because I see you've upgraded to a 5700 XT, and that is a very nice upgrade indeed. The 590s are still pretty good graphics cards. I would recommend a 580 instead um, to anyone out there debating whether or not to get a 580 or a 590, but the 5700 XT is also a very nice upgrade. So any of you out there with a 580 or 590 who are wondering what to upgrade to, well, this person here has given us a pretty decent example of where you could go. The A320 motherboard, um, some people may say that an A320 motherboard should be ignored, you should go for B450 or something like that, maybe B550 these days, but 
You know what, if you have no plans on overclocking, you're looking for a cheap motherboard that supports the Ryzen platform, then I see no problem with going with an A320 board, to be honest, you know? If you want to go for an A320 board, you shouldn't feel bad about doing so. In terms of this actual rig, well, I think it looks very, very nice, very, very clean. I like that white chassis there on the inside. It looks great with the 5700 XT in there too. That is a very nice setup, and one that should give you playable frame rates, hopefully, for a while to come. Now Thomas Robinson.01 has sent me a couple of gaming rigs here and what I love about these rigs is the contrast between new and old. On the right we have a Ryzen 1600 AF build with 16 gigs of RAM and a 5500 XT, an 8 gigabyte version, plus an SSD and a 250 gigabyte hard drive oh, with three 4 terabyte HDD. So, you know, you can fit many games on there. You're not going to be running out of storage anytime soon, I can say that now. The rig on the left, however, features an i5-2400, eight gigs of RAM and a GTX 660. Now, back in the day, well, that would have been a very, very nice system indeed. The i5-2400 and GTX 660 is something that I heard get recommended quite a lot back in 2012, 2013. And I'm sure at 1080p in 2020, it can still handle some games just fine. I'd love to see a test between those two, how they compare. I love that they're both sitting next to each other on the desk and I like the PlayStation 4 you've got on the desk as well. I'm a PlayStation man myself and I love playing the PS4 occasionally despite it sounding like a jet engine. Now we've got a very nice looking small form factor system here from Devers BJJ. This is an old HP 4300 Pro PC. It has an i7-3770S, a one terabyte Samsung SSD, another one terabyte 2.5 inch HDD from an old laptop, 16 gigs of DDR3, a 1050 Ti low profile and the original PSU. I bought the base unit for 32 pounds on eBay. Now that is a fantastic bargain. It originally came with an i3 CPU, no hard drive and no power lead. Um, they've said here that this was their first step into the door of PC gaming because they used to play on consoles. 1050 Ti low profile fits very nicely in here as well and the stock PSU should handle it just fine. I think we've stuck the odd low profile 1050 or 1050 Ti in a small form factor build in the past and yeah, I think with the 3770S well you're probably having a very nice gaming experience. And for the price, well, you can't really go wrong, can you? The base unit for £32, that's excellent. Now the S series chips, some people generally tend to stay away from. They're just low power versions of Intel chips, to be honest, and they're great for systems like this, especially if you have a slightly weaker power supply. They're, they're still good in terms of performance, but they just save you a little bit on power and they can be found for a little bit less too, which is always a bonus, of course. So on to a couple of Twitter submissions now. The first one comes from Kdu Solo. Again, apologies for the pronunciation of your usernames here. Uh, is this considered a gaming rig? They've put an Acer Nitro 5, aka Thermal Throttinator. <laughs> yeah, I have heard a few issues with those systems, but it has an i3, i5, sorry, 9300H at 2.4 gigahertz, eight gigs of RAM at 2666 megahertz, a GTX 1650 and a one terabyte HDD. Um, now, you know what? I've always wanted one of these Acer Nitro laptops just for editing on the go. I really don't need one, but I think they are fascinating machines. They look really good, quite a simple design with a light up keyboard. I think, you know, for gaming, those specs are actually quite good, but I have heard some gaming laptops have heat issues, things like that. Thermal mats or whatever you call them can sometimes help, but yeah, that's why I've never taken the plunger and got a laptop, I think. What I will say for laptop setups, though, is that they do look a lot neater. You just plop it on a desk and you're good to go. Now, next up, we have an absolutely fantastic system from Subs VV here. Now, they've put here that as they was watching my first generation i7 video a while back, they wanted to share theirs, which features an i7-965 Extreme Edition CPU. I absolutely love the old i7 Extreme chips. They are still capable in 2020. Unbelievable really, but then again they did cost about $1,000 back in the day, so it's no surprise. Now this is paired with a GTX 670 and 8 gigs of RAM. They've put they're currently living in Paris uh, and it took about five months of deal hunting to find the pieces for a total price of 45 euros. Not only that, but the 1080p display cost them just 10 euros. Now that is an absolutely fantastic deal, all of that, to be honest. It says here they actually got two 670s 
for 20 euros, which is even better. I'm not sure how well they'll pair in 2020 in terms of SLI. SLI can be quite problematic these days. A lot of games don't support it, same as Crossfire, but the 670 on its own can still hold up fairly well in a few modern titles, though I'd imagine that if you wanted to upgrade, you could probably pair a better card with that i7 and still have a great gaming experience. That's just how good those old i7s are still holding up, to be honest. Now, what we have here to finalize is a wonderful looking rig from Aussie Twist 98 here. This is built inside an old Dell XPS system, and my goodness, I think it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in terms of PC hardware. This features an i5-9600K, an RTX 2060, 16 gigs of DDR4, and a four terabyte HDD and 500 gig SSD. The old XPS case there looks absolutely fantastic. You've just said yourself that you love sleepers, so do I. I think sleeper PCs are really, really good looking. Oh, you've also put the specs of your girlfriend's PC there, is that right? Yep. Uh, the 1070 Ti, the 8400 i5, and the 16 gigs of DDR4 there are all, I can imagine, working very nicely in combination. What I like is that you said you got the 1070 Ti for $40 um, because the person said it didn't work, but it was an easy fix. Absolutely fantastic. Motherboard was $60 and SSD $20, power supply $40. And he put hers together for only $160. Now that 1070 Ti uh, is an excellent example of finding a great graphics card for a very cheap price. You know, I've had experiences with cards that uh, sellers have said are broken in the past and it really has been a simple fix. It is quite risky doing that. I suppose $40 isn't too much to risk, but if you are on a tight budget, well, it may not be the best thing to do, but I'm always so glad to hear when things like that work out. And to get a 1070 Ti for such a low price is fantastic. And what a great looking system, again, seriously. I'm going to end it there then. I've got some serious eye strain going on today. I think it's working on that video yesterday. Uh, it took quite a while. Looking at a big screen just hurts my brain. But there we go. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it. If you didn't, leave a dislike on it. You can submit your rigs at Instagram at RG in HD. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And uh, hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.